Survival of the Illest, Episode 1, ODK, Off the Kush Podcast, man. We here with the underground mayor of the city, that boy, DJ Lil King, man. What's good? What's good, y'all? What's good with it? Episode 1, here we go. All right, man. So... For the people that don't know you, the, for the people that are outside of Corpus Christi, for the people that are outside of 361, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? I'm from I'm from here in Corpus Christi, Texas. I grew up on the west side and on the south side of Corpus Christi, Texas. Originally from the West Haven area, and then we moved to the south side. I grew up most of my life in the Crestmont area. Well, before Crestmont, I lived in Molina for about five, six years, and then moved to the Crestmont area with my grandparents and lived there most of my teenage years to the beginning of my adulthood. And and what was what was it like growing up on those different sides? Man. Like what was it growing up on the south side compared to Molina or or how was it growing up? Uh, on, on Molina compared to, you know what I'm saying? Let me tell and you that, this, and this will probably surprise the fuck out of y'all. Whenever, before I lived in Molina, because I lived in Crestmont with my grandparents, before I lived in Molina, I was still living with my parents, but my grand, right, my right. great-grandma lived in Molina, so we would always go, you know how back in the day, black folks go chill at the uh, great-grandma house or grandma house, and everybody be right. there, you know what I'm right, saying? Because right. your mama, brother still live, you know what I'm saying? Still <laughs> right. live. Yeah. He on the couch. Your uncle still. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, 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 right. So my great grandma's house was like the family hangout spot. And we would go over there and be hanging out all the kids and shit like that. Uh, nieces and nephews, all the grandkids and great grandkids. And right across the street was a lady who sold frozen cups. But the lady who sold frozen cups had two sons. <laughs> Her son sold big dope. Oh, wow. So you could literally be walking up to buy a frozen cup and there's a dope fee walking right behind you. To get served from her son. But wow. we didn't even think nothing of it. It ain't like, to, you know what I'm saying? We just, it's a dope feed. You know what I'm saying? You got to watch your back. You know what I'm saying? Like, Crackhead Charlie like Icy's too. But I never really saw, <laughs> over there, over there on the West, I never really saw like, no thugging, like gang. At those times, whenever I was young, I never really saw like, they were like, Clicks and crews, but I never really saw no violence on the West in those times. You know what I'm saying? Like what? Like what? Like what? Do you, like what did you see? Like what was just over there? hustling, dope hustling, niggas riding in fly cars. It was okay. more like like that, was, that like, was that was what the West was about. Yeah. Okay. okay. Like like player shit. Okay. But at the same time, I'm going to visit my grandma. So like I said, my great grandma lived on the West. Right. I'm going to visit my grandma. I mean, my grandma who lives in Crestmont at the time, and down the street from my grandma's house, there's a park. And I remember always wanting to go to that park to play basketball. You know, you're a kid, you always want to go play basketball shit. Right, right, right. My grandma and them refused to let us go to that park because literally you could go stand, like if you stand in the middle of my grandma's street and look all the way down the street, you could literally see the park and see the whole park. Right, right, right. We used to go stand in the middle of the street and look at that park and that park would just be full of fucking red raggers with they were Crestmont Bloods. Really? And if it wasn't Crestmont Bloods, it would be full of Sudeños. Oh, wow. Crestmont used to be full of Sudeños and full of uh, Crestmont Bloods back in the day, and they were always fucking, like, beefing with each other. Okay, so, like, a curiosity question before we keep going. Was do Sudeños out, he out here in Texas or out here in Corpus, do they, are they blue? Are they, do they yeah, blue? they were, yeah, they okay, were blue. Okay, yeah, they okay. were, they were, they okay. were young, but they were official for damn So I was, like I said, around this time, I was probably, like, 9, 10, but I right, still right, remember right, right, right. being in Crestmont seeing... 13, uh, SUR, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Like right, all right. tagged up on right, the uh, right, fences and stuff right, like that. Right. So in Crestmont, like they was they was really thugging it in Crestmont back in those days, like a motherfucker. It was to the point where my grandma and them ended up buying a basketball. Like I said, this was before I even lived with my grandma. They ended up buying a basketball goal and putting it in their front yard because they got tired of us oh, asking wow. to go to the park to play. So y'all yeah. just gonna play in the goddamn- Yeah, in the, in the driveway. driveway. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. That's crazy. So. Like, were the, when you when you was looking down the street, what what was you seeing? Like, what type of activities was going on that you could see from? Well, you can't really see because the park is so far down. But there were so they were just draped in all their colors that that's right. all you could just see was just people wearing red right. or people wearing blue. You couldn't really see like, oh, they're smoking a the blunt, they're smoking cigarettes, right, or right, 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 fucking right. whatever. You could just look down the park and just see. 
Damn, that bitch was just full of about 30 niggas all wearing red. Now, when you was on- And they were all Mexicans, not niggas. They were all Mexicans, like a motherfucker. Now, now, and this was on, then this was where at? This was in Crestmont in like 1992, 1993. So let's, let's jump over to the Molina side. Yeah. What was it like over there? Those times, like I say, it was just people selling dope, fucking the, uh, the, the hustlers and the, uh, Crestmont is mostly just more Mexicans and white folks back right, in those days, right, and right, Molina right. was just straight Mexicans and niggas, you know what I'm saying? So, like I say, it was just niggas over there selling dough, smoking weed. You got the frozen cup lady across the street. You got right. a lady selling frozen cups down the street. Everybody is everybody on the, everybody on Valdez Street, which was the street that we grew up on. Right, everybody right, on right. Valdez Street, like, knew everybody. So, on, on Valdez Street, and you was peeping the, peeping the niggas smoking weed... When 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 did you jump off the porch and be like, fuck it, I'm finna start. I'm finna, I, I wanna see what that tastes like. Well, even before Pause. I saw them smoking weed, my dad was always like a weed smoker. Like my okay, dad okay. was always a type, throw us in the back of the van, go ride all through right, the West, right, go right, ride right. all through Hillcrest and fire up his little joint and right, shit. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right. I knew I knew at an early age the difference between what a cigarette smell like it was really? what, what we smell like. I probably do I probably do that like around six or seven. Nah, see, I ain't bro. I yeah. was I was I was like the dare captain in my in my in my class. Oh, I was still I was still like I was still like trying out for dare and all that shit. Right, but at right, the same right. time, it's like I knew not to take what my peoples was doing at home. I knew not to Talk about what my people what were doing at home at school. Right, right Yeah, my right. daddy smoked weed. I better not go to the school to tell these people my daddy smoked weed. <laughs> if anything, I better get, I, I get in there to cover it up for, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Okay, so, okay, so this being a storytelling podcast, yeah. I want to tell me the story of DJ Lil King, first blunt, man. First, first blunt, first high, man. I want to hear this, man. My first, my put first me time, there. My put first me time there. Smoking actually, it wasn't even a fucking. It wasn't even a blunt. It was out of a fucking Pepsi can. I was in the fourth oh, yeah, grade. Yeah, you, you, you I was in schooling. the fourth grade. My cousin, had, my cousin had stole some weed from his mama, but we were so young. He was in the fifth grade. We didn't know how to fucking roll no joint, so he just got a fucking Pepsi can. He fucking emptied that hole, washed that motherfucker out, and he fucking like turned that motherfucker sideways and. Poke some holes in the top of that motherfucker and then fucking put the weed right there. And then we smoke that bitch like, like that. We in fourth Burning grade. Your thumbs up. Yeah, and then got hot to the point where we were scared to go inside because our peoples was right there inside the house and we just right there outside. Like, it ain't like we at a park or at a friend's house. We was, my cousin, he didn't give a fuck. That's why he in the penitentiary Whose now. house shit. was y'all at? We at my cousin, mama house. Shout out to my Aunt Desi, my Uncle Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> Through my kinfolk, Sean Boston, yeah, he's doing 15 years right now in TDC. Man, yeah, he was the first the party, person. Man. He had done it before. I think he had probably like smoked like probably like one or two times before. So by the time he had told me, it was like, hell yeah. It was like, he was like putting me on. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and shit, hell, but like it was smoke, but it wasn't like, oh shit, I fucking like this shit. I'm about to smoke weed every day. Like, because after that, I probably didn't smoke weed probably for like another two or three, two or three years, you know what I'm saying? Before, right. You know what I'm saying? Before right. I snort, before I smoke weed again. I feel that. That kind of reminds me of the time, like, uh, it wasn't my first time smoking weed, but it was one of the first times that I smoked weed. Like, the, like, like you said, the first time I smoked weed, it was years and years later before I had tried it again. Yeah, yeah. And I had wound up stealing some weed from, from, from my mom, my best friend. He wound up stealing some weed from his mom. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who my mom was getting the weed from. Oh, I think you told us the story about the white boy. Yeah, okay. yeah, hell yeah, so, hell yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? We wound up in the bathroom breaking up weed, trying to be inconspicuous. You know what I'm saying? No, <laughs> Knowing the goddamn bathroom smell like we've been chopping down fucking pine trees in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? And we got fucking weed all broke up not even correctly on the back of the toilet and I'm just putting weed in the paper trying to catch the shit with a roll. Got weed falling in the toilet, baggy falling in the toilet, all type of crazy shit. We yeah. finally got a little fucking disgusting pinner rolled up. <laughs> you know what I'm God saying? Damn. It looked like it looked like I rolled that bitch with my toes. God damn. That bitch was disgusting looking. Went out in the backyard, smoked that motherfucking joint. And wound up getting caught because the neighbor just so happened to be, and this was nighttime, so I don't even know why the neighbor was even in my motherfucking business like that. But the neighbor wound up smelling it, and she wound 
she ran a daycare. Oh shit! You know what I'm At, saying? Out of her house? Out of her house. Oh bro. yeah. So when my mom came off of work, she confronted my mom like, "Oh, like I, I smell weed coming from over there, and you just now pulling up." So school smoking now? You know, you know, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to alert. You. How are you at this point, nigga? I'm like. Man, maybe 14. Already, already. You know what I'm saying? 13, 14. She's like, yeah, I just wanted to alert you that I smell weed coming from over in that area, and I see you just now driving up. So, you know what I'm saying? You might want to wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know what I'm saying? God she hit her with the, with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my mom come in the house, and she played it cool. You know what I'm saying? She was like uh, asking me a whole bunch of like miscellaneous questions. Hey, what are you guys doing? Were you guys in the backyard today? Oh, for real? What are y'all doing in the backyard? Damn. Nuh-uh, get out of here. Well, Miss <laughs> Carol across the street just wanted to just let me know that uh, she smelled weed coming from this direction, and she wanted, yeah, that's how that's how I got caught the first time. And and she hit me with, this how, is this how cold and how, how player my mom is. She hit me with, yeah, so where'd y'all get the weed from? Oh, shit. So we confess. We caught. You know what I'm saying? So we confess, like, look, he 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 took some some weed from his mom. You know what I'm saying? I took some weed from 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 you. You know what I'm saying? She's like, I know, I had it booby, I had it booby trapped. Oh shit! What did you mean booby trapped? You know, I don't know how moms. I don't know if they be wrapping hair around. I don't know what they be doing. You know what I'm saying? But my mom wound up having the weed booby trapped. She wanted to see if I was a liar. I wasn't. I confess. So she hit me with. So, uh, you know, you owe me weed now. What? Oh God, you know you owe me weed now, nigga. God damn. You thought life was sweet? Nah, you owe me weed now. And guess what? I need that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I and ever since that day, I uh I ain't never I ain't I ain't hear I ain't hear weed from my mom from that like I ain't hear weed from nobody since that day. Like I felt like if I didn't have to hide it from my mom. Yeah. Like if I'm not gonna come home and get my ass whooped for this. Yeah. Oh man, you kiss me. shit. You kiss it. Yeah. See, because by the time <laughs> whenever I was 13, that's whenever I moved in with my grandma and them, and I I start. I'm good. I got this right here. Uh, whenever uh probably by the time I started smoking every day was probably like around the age I was like 14, 15. So like 13, seventh grade, playing football, playing basketball, eighth grade. Playing football, playing basketball. I'd probably say like the summer going towards like ninth grade is whenever it was just like started trying, like not necessarily smoking every day, but trying right. to smoke every day. Right, you can't right, smoke right, every right. day at that age. Right, right. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and stay alive. Ain't or not no... just that. Like I'm looking at it like, where are you going to get money every day to buy weed? It... My peoples weren't the type of people to be like, Here's twenty bucks every Friday. Like hey, I my, make it twenty bucks every fucking six months. Hey, type it, shit. Oh God! You know but saying? in my mind, in my mind, I'm like, even if you did have the money, to yeah. motherfucking smoke like that, bro. Like, how is you hiding it every day? Mm -hmm. You not hiding it? Yeah, bro. That shit was so hard. Yeah, to look at this lady in her motherfucking eyes, high as dog shit, bro, and and try not to look high. Hell yeah, bro. That was the hardest shit growing up. My bad. Anyway. Hell yeah, but yeah, fuck it. So by that time, fuck it. Like we've always like respected our grandparents. Like I can't necessarily say respected because we 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 smoke weed in the backyard. <laughs> we smoke weed in the front yard. You but respected them enough not to smoke. Not to shit. smoke inside the fucking house. You Church know what I'm saying? And not to be sitting in the fucking living room rolling up a fucking blunt. Church. We're gonna go in our fucking bedroom, close the door, lock the door, roll up a few, and then go outside and smoke. Hide it. You know what I'm saying? Hide it on the way out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not just gonna walk with the blunt in our fucking mouth out the front door. Like right, right, always, right. just on some like respectful shit. It wasn't until I got like. Older, my grandma just passed away. What uh, two years ago? Whenever it was I was older, it was to the point where she I didn't necessarily did. give a fuck. So it was all to the point where like, man, you better stop smoking that weed. Or she she wouldn't even say stop smoking. She would just be like, boy, that shit smells so goddamn fucking. <laughs> you need to stop smoking so much, boy. If you knew how you smell, <laughs> I'd be like, it's the gas, grandma. <laughs> Hey, them old timers do not like that. But smell. yeah, she did. She she was she was definitely not a hater towards it for that. Like when we were younger and in school, yeah, we had to fucking hide it and shit like that. But as we got older and out of school, she didn't give no fucks. We were just we were just still respectful enough not to just put it in their face type shit. Did you ever get caught at school with weed? Hell yeah, never yeah, got caught. Me. No, never got caught at school with weed. But I had I was gonna tell you this earlier. I got a story where I got caught at school. Right after we smoked, me and my fucking homeboy, shout out my homeboy fucking Juan Hernandez, man. We were fucking 
He had uh I had just scored some fucking joints from my homeboy fucking Tootie. Fucking he sold me like fucking three joints for like seven or eight bucks or some shit. Right, right. And right. my whole plan was like joints? Yeah. In the paper. In the paper, they were rolling some pink papers. Who was doing that? My homeboy Tootie. This Tootie, was, you this, was winning. <laughs> Tootie had been selling weed. Tootie hey, you was, was one of those winning. kids. Tootie was one of those kids who had been selling like fucking two for five joints since he was like fucking eleven years old type shit. Hey, you know Tootie was out there like, killing the game. I remember Tootie being like thirteen years old. His dad giving him a ride to come drop off joints. To me. <laughs> <laughs> Tootie was out there his daddy killing was the like game. With the shit, like literally. Killing the game. His daddy would give him rides to come drop off weed and shit like that. Like I'm looking at it now, like, come on, man. So Tootie's with the shits. He's selling weed at Tootie school. dad probably got gas money Tootie out of it. Tootie dad was a dope fee. So too, yeah, he just had to give him five dollars or some shit. You know what I'm saying? He gonna buy some shit. So fuck it. We fuck it. I bought a fucking joints. I bought three joints off Tootie and fuck it. I find my homeboy fucking water. I'm like, hey, you want to skip and fucking go smoke? He like, fuck it, I'm fucking down. So we fucking skip. We go behind the fucking baseball field at West Oso fucking high school. Huh. We fucking get behind the fucking baseball field. My whole plan was like, fuck, I want to go home and smoke. Because like I went to West Oso, right. but I live on the south side. So right, 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 right. I don't hang out with the people that I go to school with. After school, I'm, I'm, I got I to gotta get to the south side because I'm fucking- With your I, people. I'm, I'm 10 minutes, I'm fucking 10, 15 minutes away from school. So right. after school, if I ain't involved in no fucking sports or nothing like that, my grandpa was just going to pick me right up after school right, and right, just, right. we're going to go back to the south side. Right, right. They would hate it like, Oh fucking oh I'm not I'm gonna fucking I'll be I'll get home later and then fucking it's seven thirty at fucking night. Can y'all come pick me up in Molina? Right, right. Oh, they would be right, so right, fucking right, pissed, right, bro. Right, 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 right. <laughs> they would be so fucking pissed. So fucking uh oh, man, what was I gonna say? So uh yeah, that around that time fucking we start up. Uh, oh, we was uh go we go behind the baseball field. Right, right, right. We I'm thinking I wanna take some fucking bud home. But I get behind Dude, the you got, you got the bud from out there or something? No, I got the bud from Tootie, and I told my homeboy I bought the bud from Tootie at school. Okay, okay. I take I got the you. fucking I take the fucking joints. We go. I find my homeboy Juan. We go behind the fucking baseball field, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna smoke one and probably fucking take two home so I can smoke with my homies in Crestmont. You know what I'm saying? Right, fucking, right, right, right. We fucking smoke fucking one. Next thing you know, we smoke the other one. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna fucking save the other one. But shit, we we didn't got so high and we just having so much fun. <laughs> fuck it, I'm gonna light this. Bitch light up. the fucking other oh, one up. Oh god. So we fucking light the other one up. We fucking smoke that bitch and we fucking we figure like, okay, the bell should be ringing in a little while for the next class to fucking change. So we fucking get ready to start walking towards the fucking school. And when we start walking towards the school from the baseball field, it was a the, the assistant basketball coach, Coach Flo. Coach Flo, he was a, 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 a coach at West Oso High School, but he was a teacher at West Oso Junior High. Okay. So he would show up seven period just to coach basketball. Right, right. So literally you. he was at, at this other school all day and just for seven period every day he would show up here, right. to coach. He literally fucking called us between that fucking time, walking to the fucking, walking to the fucking school and him getting out of his fucking car. And we thought that he was just going to be cool and just not even pay us no attention. But he was like, Hey, Hey, what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? <laughs> Man, he called us over. We fucking called us over. We fucking, uh, Smell like y'all was swimming. Smell in. like a fucking pound of motherfucking <laughs> like y'all was swimming in pine trees. Took us straight to the motherfucking office. They fucking nah. searched us and good thing we smoked them all. Cause when they searched us, we didn't have fucking nothing on us. Hey, I think homies and them are outside. Uh, whenever they searched us, we didn't have fucking nothing on us. Uh, fucking uh. Then they don't know what to do with us because we don't have nothing on us, wow. but we smell like fucking ten fucking pounds. Wow. <laughs> we don't have nothing on us, but we smell like ten fucking pounds. Wow. So we fucking. What they decide to do with us is throw us in fucking ISS for the rest of the day, which is basically just seven. Sleep people. it off, nigga. Just just. Seven. Man, we walk in ISS and all the bad kids are, are in ISS. Like all the hood niggas are right, in ISS. Right, right, right. Me and Wall walk in ISS and we got clout amongst everybody. Like, just because, like, we smell like a pound. <laughs> like, we were nobodies at West Oso. Y'all still smell when y'all went in ISS? I remember, I remember Big Mook. Shout out Big Mook. Big Mook said, God damn, y'all smell like a goddamn pound. Nah. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So we said in ISS for the fucking rest of the fucking day, and then they fucking let us fucking out. They screwed the bell ring, and we ended up fucking going home for the day. And the next day, they it was just normal. They didn't put us in ISS for nothing. 
That's crazy. But yeah, we got lucky because we smoked all the fucking joints instead of me trying to save. If I would have tried to save lucky one, that you smoked that motherfucker. I would have probably joint. went to jail. Nah. Literally, I probably went to jail because I was like, well, I probably would have went to juvenile. I was 16 years old, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely went to juvenile. You can call a weed to school, hell yeah, they're going to take you. So there ain't, no, there ain't no break this up, stomp, hell no. flush this, or hell no. you taking this. No. Bro, in those days, CCPD would take you to jail for a joint. You remember oh, them days, crazy. Freak? When C you get caught with a joint, bro, you going to jail. Man, you be, your ass, yeah, your ass would be sitting in motherfucking Oasis County for 30 days. <laughs> Two hundred dollars bond or or 30 days in jail. Motherfucker, if you ain't got no money to bond out, you literally sitting in jail for about 30 days over a roach this fucking small back in 2005, 2006. Say, man, when I was in school in Garden Grove High School, man. Garden Grove High School, California, bro. I was in I was a freshman. I had a partner, man. Shout out to my boy Steve Eiler, man. I had a partner, man. We used to meet up at the Garden Grove Library, which is directly, when I mean directly across the street from Garden Grove High School, yeah. the, the, is, the Garden Grove Library is directly across the street from the Garden Grove High School. Yeah. So, nigga, I would wake up like extra early. I, school don't start until motherfucking 8 o'clock, nigga. Yeah. I'm up at like 5.30, yeah. getting dressed, trying to... What's up? Give us a minute, y'all. We got technical difficulty. We right to back. Fix. Well, back to back to the story. Back to what I was saying. Garden Grove High School, directly across the street from Garden Grove Library. Yeah. I would wake up every morning extra early, extra early, yeah. walk to school just to get to the library so I could smoke with my people before I go to school. Already. So this is back in the day when. We used to smoke out of apples. You know what I'm saying? We would poke a hole on the top, yeah, hell, poke yeah. a hole on the side, and pack bowls and go for what we know. You know what I'm saying? See, we had a spot where we would smoke it. My homie Bobby Hootie, he would he would stand with his baby mama and his baby mama's uh, uh, mama. Right. And his baby mama's mama would get up early, like as fuck, at like six to go to work. Right. So my grandpa was a teacher at West Oso Elementary at the time. So I was getting dropped off at West Oso High School, like around fucking seven fucking 10 in the fucking morning right, type right, shit. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. So I still got a whole 50 minutes to just blow while I'm waiting. So literally every day we would fucking go to this dude's house who fucking stayed right across the street from already, Bobby Hoody and sold straight five dollar sweets no three for tens no None five for twenties all the way across four for motherfucking twenty but they were fucking nice size ball bats that's what we call it back in the day already, some ball already. bats so we would go we blow by weed from him and then we go to Bobby Hootie's house and smoke because we got to smoke inside at Bobby's Bobby Hootie house. Hey, nah. Man, it'd be 15, 20 niggas holding up in one bedroom at Bobby Hootie house, all just passing hey, blunts to each other. It would be about 15 of us behind the library, outside, no per like we we can be seen from every angle. And I, I want to say that the Garden Grove motherfucking police station was right down the road, man. Damn. So we out there smoking one morning, getting our 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 ritual on. You know what I'm saying? We do this every morning. We've been doing this all year. And this one year or this one day, a law man want to come come around the corner, man. And I ain't know what else to do, dog. Yeah, so I, I just did. started eating the apple. You know what I'm saying? That y'all been smoking out yeah, of? Yeah, we've been smoking out of. I just started eating the apple, man. And as this dude, as this dude is talking to us, smelling the weed, looking for the weed, he don't realize that I'm eating the weed, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, hey, man. I killed that apple as fast as I could and chucked that bitch into the parking lot and went on with my day, dog. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Everybody came up to me after that shit, dog. Like school, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we lucked out on that. We got, hey, that one was close. God damn. That one was close, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. Just. A, norm, a normal day, a normal day in Garden Grove. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, what what do you think that what do you think that was the uh, the best part of of growing up in 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 different neighborhoods or in, in different sections of Corpus Christi? Like, for instance, what was the best part of of growing up in Molina? What was the best part of growing up in Crestmont? What was the best part of growing? You you know what I'm saying? Like. Give Man, on the real, when we were living in Molina, when I was living with my people in Molina, we were struggling like a motherfucker. So 
the best part about living in Molina was we lived down the street from my great. Whenever we finally, whenever I moved to Molina with my parents, right? We moved to Molina. I want to say in like nineteen ninety five. Okay, okay. And uh, my great, we lived down the street from my great grandma who had had her house since like the fifties and shit. Okay. One of my favorite things was uh, my auntie still somebody outside. Whenever uh, my auntie was still living with my great auntie was still living with my great grandma at the time. So she bought my cousin a basketball go, and we would all be all the kids from the neighborhood would play basketball at my great grandma's house. So today, that's like a memory that I hold that everybody from the hood like would go to my like. There wasn't really no parks in Molina. They had like Molina Veterans Park, but we lived in the front part of Molina. There wasn't really no parks in the front part of Molina. Right, right. So everybody would like my grandma's house. The, my grand, my great grand. I call my great grandma my grandma. Which right, right. I say grandma. You like, how many fucking grandmas this guy? But <laughs> but I call my great grandma my grandma, and I still call my grandma my grandma. Which right. I don't even. I don't call my grandma my grandma. I call my grandma Nell. Like I don't say grandma. I call her Nell, and I call my uh my great grandma mama. Okay. But my great grandma, whenever we like, she her spot was like the hooping spot for all the neighborhood kids in Molina. Like it was, we had some notorious three on three game. You know what I'm saying in her backyard type <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we would have like fucking yeah. West Point versus Cliff Miles basketball yeah, yeah, games yeah, in my yeah. great grandma's yeah. backyard and shit them like days. that. Like that type of shit, neighborhood versus neighborhood type shit. And 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 well, like okay, so what about Crestmont? Crestmont, the man. Some of the best memories I have from Crestmont was just like. Cause first, like I say, whenever we moved in with my grandma, and then we were on we were on hard times, so we moved in. My grandma and them basically like took us in. So whenever they took us in, just them taking us in in general was just like heaven off top. Because right, my grandma right, 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 was a right. was a bus driver, my grandpa was a teacher. So in those days, Crestmont was like like high middle class. You know what I'm saying? Okay, like you guys, okay. you guys have some money living Crestmont. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. And was good with it. The first day, my the first day we moved in with my grandma and them, like we fucking went over there with like some fucking bags of fucking clothes and shit like that. My grandma and them said, oh, hell no. Nah. They took us straight to the fucking mall. They had like charging cards for like bells and Palais oh, Royals wow, and wow, dinners wow, and shit wow, like wow, that. And wow. Swiped all that shit. We left the fucking first day fucking living with them with straight polo, Tommy Hilfiger, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like shit like that and shit. So fucking then from, uh, from fucking there, fucking, we were just fucking... I'd probably say like live like being being the youngster. Like we were watching that video the other uh we were watching something the other day where we were like it was like a little kid hanging. You were talking about the dude that uh, on Bentley, the little kid that's sitting there smoking, and right, you were like, right, that right. was me back in the right, day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't that fucking young, but I was nearly like fucking 13, 14. Chilling with homies who were like fucking 22, 23. We're riding, throwing fucking Chaco cruises, as they would fucking say. They drinking big fucking 40 ounces and 24s and shit. And right, they didn't, right, right, they right. didn't bought me a fucking Smirnoff and shit because they looking like, nigga, yo, <laughs> yo ass too weak, nigga. We get, you ain't gonna buy you no motherfucking no 40s or no shit like that and shit. So they fucking, we get that boy a fuzzy navel. Uh, yeah, some bullshit. And we be fucking. <laughs> Popping fucking bars, cruising around fucking town and shit, fucking smoked out all on Ocean Drive and shit like that. So those are like some. And then like in Crestmont, we had like notorious basketball games. We had like the Crestmont versus Misty Winds basketball games and oh, shit wow. like that. Hell yeah, it was fun as fuck. Yeah, you mentioned bars, man, and uh, it's like growing up in California. Like, Crestmont was known for the bars. Growing up in California, <laughs> I never heard of no pills. <laughs> I never heard of no pills growing up in California, bro. Like my 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 extent of pills growing up in California yeah. was Tylenol threes, bro. Oh, like shit. that's as far as the pill game that I knew personally. Yeah, you know we look at that saying? shit over here. Like, so that's when some I weak ass shit. so when I came <laughs> <laughs> shit double weak ass shit. So hey, so when I came to when I came to Texas and people uh, was talking to me <laughs> about bars, I couldn't even. I couldn't even like digest what they were telling me yeah, about yeah, them. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Until I got a hold of them. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I, man, all I gotta say is I got I got some I got some horrible fuck. I've never heard a good bar story. I've never heard a a a, a story with bars that ended like in a great night. Like I you have bars personally. of the devil, bro. You know like shit. Like I never, like I shit. always hear the bar stories of like 
Oh, Niggas I took, losing every fucking I, no, thing. No, I or... took two bars and I woke up with like a whole bunch of shit that didn't yeah. belong to me. Still and I was wondering where did all this shit come from? And then the police were knocking at my door. And I, I, them the only bar stories that I've ever mm-hmm. heard. I've never heard a bar story that, oh, I popped like two bars, woke up. There was three bitches around me. And I was like, where did these bitches come from? I've never heard that story. I would like to. You know what I'm saying? Because Not saying that the story bars, doesn't exist. Like rob the bitches. Man. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason when i would get on them bars like and this is like fucking up teen years ago man i would get on them goddamn bars and in my brain i would think that i was fucking an invisible 17 year old nigga. yeah i would go and try to fucking rob little fucking stores and steal as much as thinking that these people can, like I would do it like blatantly and openly thinking that these people could not see me bro I remember going inside the dollar store to go steal something like fucking something stupid bro like let's yeah. a, a pack of fucking bubble gum let's for instance I couldn't get to the bubble gum so I stole a razor blade cut my finger with the fucking razor blade. So now I'm bleeding in these people's store. Still go to the register to try to play this. Sh- yeah, stupid shit, man. Yeah. Stupid yeah, shit. Yeah. Been down every road, oh, yeah. man. Super stupid shit. Got put over fucking with a state trooper one time. He said, what you got in your pocket? I said, sir, I'm so fucked up. I just have to reach in there and pull it out and let you. Because I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> on them fucking bars. I told him straight up. I said, man, I, was, I said, I'm so messed up right now. I, I just have to reach in there and pull it out because I don't even know. Reached in my pocket, pulled out like six footballs. In front of the law. In front man. of the laws. Put your hands behind your back. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Hell yeah. How old were you? Shit, like 21 right there in fucking Portland, Texas. Nah. Yep. Coming, where you, where was y'all going? Where you to coming fucking from? Fucking Rockport. Shripping. Yep. Shripping. Man. Well, look, man. I appreciate y'all tuning in for episode one. Uh, ODK off the Kush podcast with real Kush, real stories, real good time, man. This your boy Scoob Dose, man. We out of here, man. Man, I want to come back again. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. Already riding our podcast. Appreciate you, man.